Tonight, Saudi Arabia is sentencing an American citizen to 16 years in prison and doing that for tweets that he wrote when he was in the United States, where he lives in Florida. 72-year-old Saad Ibrahim Almadi wrote tweets that criticized the Saudi government for its tax policies and also suggested that a street be named after American journalist Jamal Khashoggi, who was brutally membered, murdered and dismembered with the approval of the Saudi government. After his 16-year prison sentence that he is now facing, he's banned from leaving the country from Saudi Arabia for another 16 years. Ahmadi would be 104 years old before he could return home to Florida. Out front now, Saad Ibrahim Ahmadi's son, Ibrahim. This is his first television interview. And also out front with me is Josh Rogan, the Washington Post reporter who first broke this whole story. Thank you both so much for being with me. And uh, Ibrahim, let me start with you. I, just to... It, 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 Unbelievably shocking news and horrible news. 16-year prison sentence for your father you've found out about. Have you been able to speak to him or to get any information about how he's being treated? Zero calls until now. Zero calls? Zero calls until now. My father uh, have been tortured and I have been not able to contact him, uh, not even through phone. Um, the Department of State uh, have told me they are working in his case, but I haven't seen any progress yet. I have been working 11 months in silence, but there is no progress yet. And they've, and they've talked to you about the, the torture that your father is enduring, right? Absolutely. My father received a uh, freezing temperature in his cell. Uh, they wake him up in the middle of the night. Uh, they prevent him from sleeping. Uh, they uh, torture him until he convicted himself that he made some uh, tweets in order to destabilize the kingdom. Uh, my father uh, is no near uh, being dissident. My father, he's a senior American citizen who just went to live freely and happy in the United States where he got his education in the 70s and 80s. Right, and of course, and lived there, as you say, lived in the U.S., um, Josh, Correct. you you obtained, and I have read all of the tweets, 14 tweets, <laughs> that led to these charges against Al Mahdi. They are tame, to say the least. He criticizes the Saudi royal family in one for spending the people's money. In another one, he mentions naming a street after Jamal Khashoggi. As I said, they're incredibly mild. I didn't see anything else that was even that critical in the 14 tweets he sent. I mean, it, it, very, very vague. I mean, it, Josh, this just doesn't seem to add up. Right. Well, Aaron, what's important to note here is that these tweets were made by an American citizen while he was in the United States. In other words, he's expressing the right to freedom of speech as an American citizen while in our country. And then when he shows up at the airport in Riyadh, they take him from the airport, throw him in prison and sentence him to 16 years in prison. Now, that's not only a violation of his rights as an American citizen, it doesn't even comport with Saudi law. And when you think about that, it means that the Saudi regime under Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is extending its arm of transnational repression into our society. And now they feel that they have the right to imprison anyone who commits any slight against the regime, even if it doesn't happen in their own country. And that's a really dangerous precedent. And that's why I think that the Almaty family has been rightfully pressing the State Department to give Mr. Almaty the designation of being wrongfully detained. That's the most important thing. That's mm -hmm. what Brittany Griner has. That's what Paul Whelan has. And they deserve it, don't get me wrong. But Mr. Almaty also clearly right. deserves mm -hmm. it. And that would allow the State Department to really be active on his case. And here we are, 11 months later, 16 years in prison, 16 years of a travel ban, and they won't give him that, and they won't explain why, and that's a travesty. I, Ibrahim, I, I understand the State Department had asked you, you referenced this, but they asked you to not say anything. They were working on this, and you complied for 11 full months. So 11 full months you've been living this. They've talked to you about how they know your father's being tortured. They've seen those 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 tweets, which were incredibly uh, generic and, and, and sent from the United States from Florida. Um, and, and you are speaking out now. What made you decide to do that right now? Great question, Aaron. Uh, I have been following the guidance of the Department of State and our embassy in Riyadh uh, since December 2021, since I know about the situation, because my family has to hidden the story from me for a month. Uh, as soon as I told them, they advised me to work with them uh, secretly so they can perform better. So I did. And after doing that, 
my father was whole, was been held for 11 months for no charges, and now he's been sentenced for 16 years. And until now, they have no intention of placing wrong detention on him. If my father was held in Russia or Iran, we'll see his name in the headlines every morning. No, but Josh, obviously, this is in the context of a, a United States that has uh, been uh, obviously ramping up its relationship again with Saudi Arabia and Mohammed bin Salman, right? Uh, MBS negotiated the freedom of those two American fighters, uh, humanitarian aid to Ukraine, uh, meetings with Biden, and, and that seems to be the priority now. Well, it's kind of a bizarre situation where the U.S. government is happy to uh, bargain for Americans who are held by adversary regimes, but won't bargain for Americans held by supposedly allied regimes. And sure, we understand that the Biden administration has interests in keeping the U.S.-Saudi relationship nice and friendly, and they need the oil and they need the good relations. But at the same time, Americans are trapped there unjustly, and it's their responsibility to get them out, and they're not doing it. Well, this is a, an incredible story, and incredibly hard to even understand. It doesn't add up in any way, and it's important for people to, to hear it. Thank you both so very much, uh, Josh, with it. the reporting, and Ibrahim uh, to talk about your father. Thank you.